Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, and I'm broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. Uh, the topic of the day, today we're going to be talking about going with the flow and surrendering to the moment. Um, operating from a place of not knowing. Um, and I'm going to get into this and explain it in details because um, I know how difficult it is for a lot of people who always have to know everything. They have to know what's going to happen. They need to know um, if they meditate, what's going to come up. If uh, they go on a path of enlightenment, what they should be expecting. If uh, for example, taking a life training program with me, uh, what they should be expecting or when is what's going to happen and so on and so forth. So, and I'm going to get into this in details and explain it to you because a lot of it has to do with our controlling part, which is our ego that must know everything and it's the mind wants to know things, but life is different than mind. So life has its own agenda. And I'm going to get into that and hopefully we'll be able to put some light on it and help you uh, to sync yourself with life. So regarding syncing ourselves, synchronizing ourselves with life, is one of the most important things is to be meditative and to get into a meditation practice so eventually meditation can become your every moment life and everything you do in life becomes meditation and i'm going to get into that so for the moment we're going to do a simple meditation that is very powerful and it works. And I have used this, uh, just one moment, I'm going to wait for this um, truck to drive by because they're advertising something. I don't know what they're advertising. It's the ice cream. It's the ice cream. You know what? It's alive. I like it here because it's alive. And I really appreciate it. It's not like you're not separated from life. You're really melted. You know, it's not like a lot of the places in the, in the West that you're separated, you're isolated. You're always in your home. You're always in your apartment. You may, like, for example, when I drive to Beverly Hills, you see all these beautiful homes beautifully with landscape and beautifully manicured, but nobody's sitting on the lawn, on the grass area. Uh, you don't see anybody walking on the streets, but the, everybody has beautiful homes, but there is no life outside. So everything is inside. And something I like about these kind of countries is that it puts me in touch with life. And, um, and I like that. Even though sometimes it's inconvenient, maybe there's too much noise on the street or someone is advertising for something or, but I prefer that rather than being completely isolated uh, and not be in touch with the world, not be in touch with life. So, but that's a, you know, preference. One of the best meditations and easiest meditations that I have come across in my spiritual career life span is one of the most simple ones, but it requires attentiveness. You just have to be attentive to it. And what you do is you simply 
trace back your thoughts. Follow your thoughts inwards. Look at your thoughts, follow them, and see where do your thoughts come from. Very simple, no effort. It basically requires zero effort. And that's the best kind of meditation you can ever do. Zero effort, natural. Simply turn your attention inwards. Do you have any thoughts in your mind? Okay, if you do, follow the thoughts, trace them back and see where do they come from. And if you do this correctly, your mind goes into silence because the thoughts come from nowhere. They just appear. And if you follow your thoughts to the source, you fall into silence. Now, keep in mind, you fall into silence for a few minutes, and then another thought comes. A thought rises and says, oh, this is really difficult to do. I can't do it. That's a trick your mind is going to play on you. And you treat that thought like you were treating the other thoughts. You look at it and you trace it back to its origin. And again, you fall into silence. There is no need that you put an effort into silencing your mind. You don't need to put any effort into it. All you have to do is be watchful of the mind. Be aware of it. That's all you have to do. Simply look at it. And in looking at your mind, the mind will dissolve. Because the mind is just a bundle of thoughts. That's all it is. All it is, is a bundle of thoughts. Simply take a look at your thoughts. And take a deep breath and allow yourself to melt in to this moment, whatever this moment is. Allow yourself, give yourself permission to sink in, into yourself. Allow yourself to simply practice your very natural inherited space. Simply sink into this moment, that's it.
Yeah, simply allow yourself to be absorbed by the presence, by this moment. You're simply not doing anything. You're not involved. It's in your uninvolvement with life that all of a sudden the magic appears from not trying to do something or accomplish. You simply are here without an agenda. Simply here without an agenda. Simply here without an agenda, without any kind of forcing anything to happen, simply allowing. Don't force it. Now you can slowly, slowly come back, slowly, slowly shift your awareness, consciousness from a world of nothingness, silence, shifting your consciousness to this other part of yourself. It's simply a shift. You have your attention on one place. You brought your attention into silence and everything becomes quiet because your nat nature is silence and peace. And then you took your attention in the world of realm of speaking, talking. You open your eyes to the other world so your attention shifts. So now that you as a sentient being have the ability to shift your attention. So if you put your attention on confusion, chaos, fear, worry, then that's going to manifest and show itself to you because that's where you're attention is because you're the vast awareness you're this infinite awareness that really gets laser focused on one thing and that thing becomes its reality or it starts to expand itself and then its reality changes because it's all here simultaneously. Everything is here, all of it. Even other realms, other dimensions, other beings, everything is simultaneously is here. 
It depends how vast is your vision. If you're capable of being just in the box and only looking at everything from here, if you're able to expand it, then suddenly other realms, other possibilities, other worlds, they start to appear to you. They make themselves available to you. And then one of the ways in to become free if you're interested in freedom, if you are in a place that you feel you're suffering or you are worried or you are in any way you struggling with your life, it could be spiritual awakening with being in this place that you experience love and the self, not romantic love. You're at a place that your mind is quiet. It's not agitated all the time. There's no spikes in it. A place that maybe you want to be really happy. Whatever is your story, wherever you're at, whatever is you're looking for, maybe you're bored with your life and you're looking for something to entertain you. You just look at it and see where you're at with yourself and you be honest with yourself. But if you come to me and ask me, Zarathustra, what should be the attitude? And I can only share with you what I've discovered with myself and what has led me to a different kind of a lifestyle, a a way of being that it's tranquilo, it's relaxed, it's easy, and a way of being that you're allowing things to come to you rather than you forcing it to happen. So is again, it's a shift of your attention. It's a shift of your focus. And I'm gonna explain this to you. I um, I have a lot of clients. I have uh, followers, students, friends from all over the world, from different ages. Um, and what I found with a lot of my people that I work with, um, and I see where they're stuck mainly, is this sense that of wanting to know everything this sense that you you need to know what's going to happen um with if you do meditation or if you take a course um how long it's going to take for your mind to become quiet how long it's going to take you to really feel self-love uh, if you're doing a training with me, um, when are you going to get enlightened? When are you going to be happy? You know, there's this thing, and I'm only using this as an example. This is not the only thing. But this thing that I need to know, I need to that what if I trust life and I jump? or let's say I relocate to another country or another place, or I move in with somebody, or I move out out of my home. I'm married, I have, you know, I end of my marriage and it's not working and I have to move out. So what's gonna happen? How is this gonna be? I need to know. Or I'm moving in with someone. Whatever is the story, I'm using these as simple examples to give you an idea is something that i encounter with people sometimes on daily basis is that this thing that i need to know and which is quite opposite when what i discovered is i don't need to know 
it's not really i don't really need to know because something else inside me within me around me knows everything so i can relax and step back and relax in this mode that that which is much greater than me the intelligence that has created the world that intelligence that turns the day to night the night to day brings winter to spring spring to summer it makes the planet to turn around itself and the planet is turning around the sun and there's a bunch of other planets doing the same thing and none of them are riding colliding with each other and also this same intelligence is running your body your heart is working your digestion system is working your circulatory system is working your you're not paying any attention to any of it you don't think like okay in 30 minutes from now on my heart needs to pump 50 times faster or my now my pancreas needs to produce Pant pancreatic juices because you you're not doing that something else is doing it something else is in control something else is running the show so you can relax into that by opening yourself opening your mind opening yourself from this thing that i need to know i need to know i need to know everything I'm not gonna go out on the street uh, because I'm afraid. I'm not gonna do this because it's scary. I'm not gonna do that because of blah, blah, blah. You slowly relax into, okay, I'm gonna trust in this force that it knows what it's doing. I'm gonna relax into it. You understand what I'm saying? Are you with me? Yeah? Yeah? So are we on the same page so far? So what we do is simple shift. I'm not telling you that make a major change in your life. I'm not telling you to make a radical move. Okay? I'm just saying simply relax into this other part of yourself that is the grand intelligence and knows all but this part of you who you think you are doesn't know so this part is like this controlling thing needs to control everything needs to know everything needs to control other people I uh, like I remember I've been around people like or my family like they really need to know what time I'm going to go and what time I'm coming and what I'm doing in the past when I was in my youth it's like they need to know everything it's like sometimes you know what okay just chill out you don't need to know everything just relax just take a deep breath just ah oh, just let go it's okay it's okay. You don't have to know everything. You can just chill, tranquilo, pull back, relax, shift, change your seat from here that I need to know everything, da 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 da, to okay, you can just relax. Huh. And let life to unfold itself let life to show to show you what's available on every moment and every day of life 
you allow the life to come to you and it will give you ways you know maybe it's not open here but all of a sudden something opens here and then you swiftly go through that gateway so you begin to look at life that way this is a shift of your vision and of course you have to have the willingness to do it if you want to do it i'm not forcing anything on you i'm not telling you what to do and what not to do okay i've said that many times no requirements i don't have any judgments whether you want to do it or you don't want to do it i'm just simply sharing with you what i've discovered it's my own knowing not something i read from a book not something i listen to someone another teacher's video i'm talking about what i've discovered myself so my own direct knowing my own direct experience not knowledge is that it's a very good time in life to step back and not have to be so involved with stuff whatever is the stuff oh i need to post on facebook three times a day about COVID, and you know i need to really post on da 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 da, da and about president biden or us or economy and it's like just just take a deep breath just relax pull back it's okay you don't have to run the world you can let yourself just take a vacation from trying to run the world and figure everything out about the world And in that, in that moment that you pull back, what happens is all of a sudden space opens up in between your involvement with things that you need to control. First of all, you're never in control of anything because you don't have, nobody has the, the ability in this world to control anything that you will discover when you come to a higher level of consciousness that there is no such a thing to begin with it's just non-existing but for now in the illusion that we live and what appears to be real and in this appearance that this world appears to be real and there's a me and there's a you and we decide what to do where to go what to eat and it appears that we have some kind of control it only appears to be appearance i'm only talking about that realm in that you recognize it for a moment and you just pull back you pull your energy back and you just pick up start picking up this attitude that let life come to me let opportunities come to you instead of constantly wanting to make it happen and this doesn't really go very well with pseudo spirituality because the new spirituality in the world that is being practiced is about you manifesting things you are creating your own reality and you're manifesting things by positive imagination positive visualization positive talking you're going to create and manifest things and get what you want i'm not talking about that i'm actually talking the opposite of that 
So if you're really attracted to that teaching, this is not of any use to you. You're wasting your time with me because this is completely the opposite. This is pulling back and not trying to manifest anything, not trying to force anything to happen or wish it would happen. I wish that would happen or not. No, not even wishing to happen because the boss, that which has created you and has brought you to this life and breathed its soul in your in your heart and that's why we're alive because God blows the spirit in the body and and then you come without God's breath we just you're just an object you know you're nothing so now you're just relaxing in this godly part of yourself, this divine self, higher intelligence, and you allow it to reveal itself to you and you allow it to present to you. It's like presentation. When you go in a restaurant and you sit down and you wait, for the waiter, waitress is going to bring you a glass of water. They're going to bring you a menu. They're giving you a presentation of what kind of food they can make for you. So you're looking at the menu. You don't go in a restaurant and go in a kitchen and demand to be cutting things and see how they're doing things in a restaurant, how they're cooking. You don't go in a restaurant every time to do that. They'll kick you out or they think you're crazy. And you just don't do it anyway. But with life, we are interfering. We wanna go in the kitchen and I need to know how you're doing your meat and how you're cutting your fish and how you, you want to interfere with, with it because you want to be in control of it, because you have this sense that you need to know everything. But the interesting thing is you don't know anything. That's the interesting part. And the more evolved you become, the more you realize you don't know anything and you don't need to know it because the more you are pulling back and allowing life to come to you and life takes care of things rather than your imaginary character wanting to be in control of things. So what happens that equality of the presence begins to reveal itself to you. Something starts to show itself to you by just this shift, by just changing this pers pers perspective. Even if you do it for one day, even if you do it for half an hour, one hour, you are aware of yourself. In this awareness, you decide that, you know what, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to just do what Zarathustra is suggesting and I'm just going to lean back and allow life to come to me. And then you begin to experience a shift, a vastness, an openness happens. Something all of a sudden opens energetically. And in that opening, things start to manifest, things start to appear to you without you trying to do any kind of manipulative jumping jacks or trying to manipulate the spirit because that's what pseudo-spirituality is. 
the new spirituality is actually very selfish. It's a lot all about me, me, me. It's not about other people. It's all about me getting what I want. So it's really very ego, ego base. It's kind of ugly. It hides itself behind a pretty mask, but it's really ugly because it's all about me getting whatever I want. You have to be very alert and awake in this time and not fall asleep. Because we've been sleeping for a long time. It's time to, to wake up. This is the time. Is happening and if you want freedom and you want to be happy then you need to expand because both freedom and happiness is already here it's available it's in your field the reason you don't see it or experience it is because you're too focused on that sense that you need to control things, you need to know things. It's my life, it's the, the, all the stuff versus, ah, oh, expanding. Okay, all right. I don't know. I don't know anything. Let's see what comes, what life has for me. Yeah, it's kind of fearful, especially if you have a very strong, structured Western mind mentality that I have to know everything. Now you're shifting into not knowing and it's scary. Initially, only initially, but you have to go through your fear. You have to just go for it or stay where you're at and suffer. And nothing to lose by giving something a try and giving a nice fair try to see what happens. But my experience was that as I started to discover this, that I let go and I'm just pulling back, especially now that I'm traveling. I'm here in Mexico. There's a lot of things to do and a lot of things to figure out and whatever you need to do. You're going to change your hotel. You need to figure things out. You're going to get a motorcycle, rent a motorcycle. It takes half a day. You know, you got to go figure out what to do, everything. You have to figure things out constantly. And, uh, but in the midst of it, it's been very clear to me that by kind of pulling back and not really force things to happen, even though at the moments you feel like, what am I doing? I'm wasting my day. I'm not doing my homework. I'm not doing my research. Why am I hanging out for two days at the beach? and? not doing anything or drinking a beer your mind comes says okay you gotta go look at this you gotta go look at that you gotta go check this out but by recognizing that being in the space all of a sudden everything i need it really comes to me i'm not really all of a sudden some someone appears to me and we're sitting there having a beer da, 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 and then they say oh yeah i have a motorcycle shop i rent motorcycles and all of a sudden i go rent a motorcycle which is 40 percent cheaper than everybody else's and i met this guy on the beach having a beer together so i didn't really go look for it it just came to me or you're just relaxing you're there you're pulling back you're in a restaurant you meet a real estate agent and you've been wanting to find a real estate agent to go look at some apartments and there she is. So, and that's the way, these are the secrets of universe. This is how it works. But these are not things that 
it's very difficult uh, for a lot of people to understand because they're not always black and white. We want to find a formula and apply this formula to life to manipulate life so things go your way. And you need to catch yourself because that leads into suffering and that leads into this sense of I am separated from existence. There's an me, this I, and I'm only happy when I get what I want. And there's always got these ups and downs constantly. <clears throat> and you want to get rid of that and you want to come back into this place which is steady, it's balanced, there's no spikes in it. And then to receive the juice of life, to receive really the pearls of life, the magic of life. And these are only you discover in the mystery schools. You can't read it on a book because when you read, you're reading the lines. You're reading the lines in a book. The magic of life is not in the lines. It's in between the lines. It's not what you're reading. The secrets are not, they're hidden in front of your eyes. So you have to let go of this imaginary sense of control and always have to know into this more chilled out, laid back, kick back attitude, even though your mind keeps coming and says, no, I need to know this, I need to know that, I need to. You need to shift and, and that shift expand. You pull back in that pulling back an expansion starts to happen and it sinks you into the moment of, the, of life. And then all of a sudden the moment begins to give you these pearls. I mean, you can sit down and read 50 books as some of you in, in spirituality, a thousand books. But it's not something, this is not like a knowledge. This is not like information you read and you memorize and you're done. That's not it. Don't treat this like that. If you treat it like that, you're making a huge mistake and you're missing out on a tremendous opportunity for transforming. These are hints, hints of directing you into this space of within yourself where freedom is. Because the mind wants to understand everything and it wants information. What I'm referring to you is the mind cannot understand what I'm saying. It won't get it. You have to do it on your own. And then it reveals itself to you. And then many different things happen. Of course, if you're meant to be used as a healer, you're a healer, you're channeling, you're, 
doing telepathic communication, whatever is your knack in that relaxed space since the portal opens up there is you're allowing existence to travel through you because the gate has opened up it's a much bigger portal of energy tra traveling through you than being so narrow-minded and stuck in one way then you start to experience vastness and vastness is equal to bliss bliss appears in your life but it's not a spiky bliss it's not like you really get high and you fall down which a lot of us know that you know getting really happy or being really high or you went and did a workshop for five days, four days, and you're really high, and then you crash. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a constant dosage of feeling really good. And there's bliss in it. Is that right, Miss Candace? Hi, Candace. Yes. Yes. Hi. Yes. That's uh, very right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm very happy for you to come to this discovery. And I really appreciate your feedback. <laughs> you helped a lot. <laughs> well, thank you. You were ready for it. We did the live training program together and, and, uh, we talked about a few things. I uh, shared, may I, may I say a couple of things? Is that okay, Candace? Of course, yeah. yes. I, yeah, a few things we talked about of discovering this space of constant feeling of bliss, but it's subtle. And whenever you're not really busy with your mind, or you're not really engaged with a story, as soon as you disconnect from it, you start feeling this bliss. And you know, a lot of times you just start laughing, you don't know, or you may cry and you may just go, oh my God, I love life. Because in that understanding, which my sister Candace came to this understanding, it's like all of a sudden this love, this bliss, constant bliss has appeared. Am I right, Candace? Maybe you share with us. What what's going on? It's mostly always there. You know, once in a while something comes up that brings me down a little, but when once that's done, I'm you know, I'm back again. Right. There are moments like you're getting engaged with something. Maybe someone did something and you got angry, like they installed a refrigerator in your house and they did it completely wrong. And now you're upset with them in that moment. But then when you pull back, you go back into this steady state. Is that right? Yeah, yes, yes. And I'm learning more and more what you're talking about today. I call it trusting, you know, trusting the yeah. script as you, as you uh, talk about the script. Yes, it's trusting. Trusting. Another word for it. I even noticed recently I got upset with a friend who wanted to cancel what we had planned and I was upset about it. And then I thought, wait a minute, it's the script. The script wow. did that, not my friend. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. And then you just could you easily let it go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And it's like, this is something you, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. It's something like you may tell yourself, my God, I could have always done this in my life. What, what was I thinking? How come I didn't know to be this way? When you get it, then you're saying, oh my God, this was so simple. I all these years I struggled and suffered because I'm fighting life. 
I want to make I want to make life happen the way I want it, rather than just relaxing into what is. And then all of a sudden, life is giving me everything. It's, I don't know, it's so simple, but yes, of course, I've been on that side of being a spiritual seeker most of my life and seeking. On the other hand, I, I can see it's like hiking Mount Everest, but then on this side, it says, oh my God, this was like, this way is so easy to be, so natural, because you're not really trying. Everything comes. And yeah, there is the appearance of effort. There are times like you're putting effort in things. There's the appearance of it. But basically it comes to you. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi, Mary. Hello. Hello. You're just going to have to talk a little bit louder so we okay. can get it. Thank you. Okay. Thank is that better? Yeah, that's that's good, Mary. Okay. Thank you. You know, I just wanted to, to thank you and validate uh, what you're saying because I, I've, I've switched up from wanting to be one of those manifestors. And I've switched up right. in the last like year or so and into just letting life occur. And, and like what you said about having space, I notice like even physically, I feel like I have more space between my heart and my head. Like I feel free in this area of my body. And it's, I have a very big thing to do, a very complicated difficult thing to do because my son and I, my Down syndrome son and I are going to move to Oregon from California. Okay. okay. And there's a lot of details for me and I don't really have any help with it. And it's scary. And I'm thinking now how I would have been dealing with this and handling this several years ago. It would have just been this endless beehive in my head, just, blah, 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 just this endless beehive. And now I'm doing it differently, and, and, and I've been listening to your teachings and listening to you, and I found that, that space and that nourishing silence. And the man I thought was going to fix up my house, nope, I let that go. It's a different guy. It's a different couple of guys, and it's going to work out much better. The things that I thought were going to go down, I let it go, and now better things are happening. I found out my daughter wants to come with me now which is like, yes, yes. So I've been experimenting with that exact thing that you're talking about today. Just letting life happen and trusting and being happy and knowing that I, I'm not the driver. The grand poobah, her majesty is the driver and I'm happier now. And I feel like this amazingly scary uh, unknown, all these many unknowns, are not so scary to me now. I feel yeah. like it's going to be cool. It's going to happen. And I do have to do a lot of stuff. And I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know when my house is going to sell. But it's working better now. It's better now for me. And the beehive has really calmed down. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I really, first of all, congratulations. Because... <laughs> That's a very good place to arrive to on your spiritual path. You're, you're, you're very close. It's this, been very, I feel happier. Yes. Yeah. You're in your natural state. Mm -hmm. And there's no and I didn't get And I didn't get anything from manifesting. The law of attraction thing. That, that, I got nothing out of that. Zip. It, it just activates your mind more. It fortifies that part of the brain to keep thinking, thinking, thinking all the time. Yes. I was driving myself nuts. In fact, I have tinnitus in my ears. And I've noticed the tinnitus has just chilled down, too. The, the beehive has literally gotten quieter. Yes. Absolutely. I'm very, very happy to hear that. This is a huge place to arrive to. 
because from here that's where it's going to take you to full awakening because now you're sitting like on this um you go skiing and you sit in the chair mm -hmm. when you're the the uh, uh, the tramp is taking you up the mountain mm -hmm. and now you're just sitting there relaxing and it only keeps elevating you're not struggling mm -hmm. it. you're not getting in the way you're not trying to make anything happen you're just sitting there on this beautiful sunny day snow under you temperature is perfect sun is shining on your face and god is taking you slowly home to deliver you right and it's so much easier it it's just going to be easier and easier so and i keep getting these senses of when i was a child all of a sudden i'll think whoo i feel a little kind of free like i feel like i'm good i don't have to worry about stuff that's what i also was sharing with my sister candace and she was letting me know about it yeah there's these moments of of a uh burst of love and laughter and happiness that it just pops mm -hmm. you know oh my god it, it, yeah. yeah it's not overwhelming it's not big spikes but right. it's constant you know it's like wow because there's space you allow things you stop you smell the roses you smell the bread is being baked you you are not going so fast anymore you're slowing down mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you can see the magic of life in this moment which is happening at every single moment of life there's magic mm -hmm. and in that your fear you lose your fear you know of just really hanging on to money hanging out to relationships hanging out to real estate constantly trying to hang on to things you just allow you let go you let it come to you so congratulations thank Wonderful. you thank you you're welcome you're welcome anybody has any questions uh any comments hello heinz nice to see you heinz Hello, Hello, brother. N nice seeing you. Everything's good? Yeah, I, I can't hear you. You're muted, but from... Yeah, I don't hear you. I, I don't know why. So... It's okay. Let me see. Uh, Someone, someone else wants to say hello? Anybody wants to say hi? No? No. Okay. You can also write on the chat box, um, chat section. Okay. Cool. Well, a couple of announcements that I'm going to have a uh, seven day retreat and uh, we have scheduled it for starting on the, I'm gonna take a look and let you know, it's scheduled for February 20th to 26. And you're welcome to go on my website. It's a free online, um, global self-awakening and this one is about um creating the new self the rebirthing of the new you and i'm going to talk about that and a lot of things that we have spoken uh we're going to talk about it but i'm going to give you clues of uh in this rebirthing in this new life which is coming the old needs to die and it's like a snake which is shedding and that snake has never shed before 
and now is losing its old skin and the new one is coming out. Or if you don't like that example, we can, because some people don't like snakes. It's like a caterpillar is becoming a butterfly. And so there's transformation in what is going on. And, uh, and that's what we're gonna talk about and the retreat is gonna be about. So you're welcome to join in. You're welcome to invite your friends. Uh, so far at this moment, I am set to put the retreat for these dates. Is a possibility that I may change it to the following week because I may stay here a bit longer uh, in Mexico. Um, if I do, I'm gonna let you know ahead of time. But for now, we're set for those dates. You're welcome to go on my website. It's zaratustra.tv. Um, this broadcast will be uh, mailed to you. It also, we're going to put it on YouTube and Facebook. And this, and the address is Zarathustra 5D, as well as my podcast and Twitter account. So basically you're going to have this broadcast on podcast, Facebook, and YouTube, and it will be mailed to you. Let's see if I have any other announcements. The only thing I have is uh, I'm gonna start enrolling my new students at my live training program. At this point, I have uh, a lot of my other students, their program ended, and I'm gonna be able, I'm able to take new students for that. Uh, what you wanna do is send me an email and we make an appointment uh, it's a free consultation. We talk about your situation because this is a um, tailor-made specific training program for your needs. So we talk about it and I'll, I'll, I will give you all the details. Other than that, I wanna thank you for joining me and we're going to have our next academy. It's going to be next Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to switch the time rather than nine, uh, 10 o'clock Los Angeles time. I'm going to do it at nine, nine in the morning. Um, so that's going to be my 12 o'clock here. And that's going to give me more time. It's going to free my day. So just for next week, we're switching the time. We're gonna do the academy an hour earlier. And if I do move to this part of uh, Mexico, then I can do the academy earlier. And that for those of you who are in Europe, uh, I can pull it back one hour. So instead of starting at 7 p.m., we can start at 6 p.m. Because I know some of you wanna eat and go to bed early and uh, so we'll see what happens i'm open uh, to see where life wants to take me uh, i'm not hoping but i'm open nice having you god bless you sending you a lot of love and feel free to communicate with me you can always send me an email uh, my email address is info at zaratustra.com. Namaste, be well, and be good to yourself. God bless.